Hey, man, how are you? I'm all right. How are you? I am good. The last time you were here, I was not here. You weren't. No, you, you were... weren't. And I had a great time. Yeah, we. Uh, <laughs> he guest hosted for me, and thank you so much for doing that. Thank you. Did you have fun? I did. Had a great time. Yeah. Not 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 only myself, but I had my mother as my co-host that day. If you guys remember, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Your mom was here, and uh, she's uh, she's got a, a personality. Yeah, I think she probably ruined it for me coming back. <laughs> um, <laughs> But no, no, we had a great time. She, well, I get my personality from my mom. I like it. Yeah. Um, you also uh, hosted the uh, NAACP Awards, and you met Prince Harry and Meghan. Yes. And your mom uh, also uh, was there. She was. And what happened there? Um, my mom's, you know, it, it's every young woman's dream to be a princess. You know, growing up, they want to be a princess, so my mom actually got to meet a princess. But more importantly, she met the princess's mom. It was like, oh, what's up, mama? Come over here, mama. I'm from Compton, you from South Central, come on. <laughs> so my mama thought there was like an instantaneous bond between the two of them. I was like, mom, you can't be asking that woman for her phone number. She don't know you like that. Right. <laughs> my mama wanted to take uh, 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 Meghan Markle's mom to the bingo hall and all. I was like, mom, uh -huh. mom, <laughs> uh, I, I don't think they play bingo like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, it was, it was a great time. It was a great time meeting. Uh, uh, the royal family, and, uh, and my mom was really excited about that. That's cool. Um, so you're back in, uh, in New York, living there right now. Back in New York, I am. Uh, back on Law and Order. Uh-huh. Uh, have a great time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, back in the streets of uh, Manhattan and, and every other borough that's around there, solving crime. Uh, and I heard there was a, a you, you posted something about a crazy New York story, that, that uh, typical New York story. Yeah, well, I was walking down the street one day and I realized, I was like, oh, I need to go into Best Buy and buy these televisions for my, 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 my new apartment because, you know, March Madness is gonna start and I didn't want to watch the game that night. So I go in there and buy some televisions and they tell me they can't deliver them till Wednesday. I was like, but it's Saturday and I need to watch these games tonight. And the gentleman uh, ahead of me, he was like, hey man, uh, I take you home. I was like, word? Cause I only live like literally five minutes away. He was like, yeah, you're just getting a TV, right? I was like, yeah, he didn't know I was getting three. Um, so it was me and five Best Buy employees dragging these 65 inch televisions outside to his Dodge Durango truck that he didn't tell me he had his lady friend in, and he didn't tell me he was full of work equipment. And so it was me and these five employees cleaning out his truck, including his lady, to put my televisions in, <laughs> and he was gonna leave his lady friend on the side of the road and come back for her. I was like, hey, man, no, you can't do that. He was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, she's bigger than me, so let me sit on her lap. <laughs> and so he sat on her lap in the passenger side, and I drove. Now, I drove. <laughs> I, I drove his car because I didn't want to get kidnapped, you know, because these, these were strange people, and I feel if, I, if I'm behind the wheel driving the car, they're not going to do anything to me because then we're all going to die. So I drove. But the thing about the car, I put it in drive, and it didn't move. And the gentleman was like, oh, man, you got to put it in reverse. I was like, but I'm trying to go forward. He was like, yeah, man, it's my hoopty. You got to put it in reverse. <laughs> And he leaned over and put the car in reverse, and I mashed on the gas, and we went forward. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Great story. So, um, Alex and Charm, if you're watching, what's up, Alex? What's up, Charm? <laughs> what a great guy, though, to just offer to, to drive you to your place with your TV. Did he help you carry him upstairs when you got home? No, I didn't want him to know where I lived like that. <laughs> you know, he is a stranger, uh -huh. Ellen. But uh, I did pay for his uh, extended warranty on, on the television that he was buying. He oh. was buying a projection television. Oh. And I was like, how much is the insurance? And he was like, $189. I was like, OK, I I'll get his insurance, because yeah. I'm not going to. Gas is more expensive than the insurance yeah. I was keeping. Yeah, sure. So uh, I was like, yeah. I'll, I'll pay for the extended yeah. warranty, not the gas. I was going to say, you should have paid for his transmission, because that <laughs> <laughs> that would have been nice. Um, so, uh, did I did I just hear this morning that you graduated from Howard University or are graduating? I'm graduating this fall. Yes, thank you. In what? What did you master in? Uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts. I was a theater major, and I started <laughs> back in 1988. That was my freshman year, and unfortunately, I ran out of cash. I was paying for school myself couldn't call home and ask my parents uh, to help me with tuition. I had 
three brothers and sisters that were still at home. So I was like, eventually I'll go back to school. So uh, 34 years later, uh, I'm getting my degree uh, from Howard University. Congratulations. Thank you. Very, Thank very you. cool. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. That's <laughs> Anthony Anderson in blackish. Um, we were just talking during the break. So this is the final season. Uh, the finale is tomorrow. Yes. Tomorrow. Yes. Did you cry? I did. I didn't cry as much as Tracy Ellis Ross, though. <laughs> she cried every day. She cried every day. I mean, you know, she's, she's... Actually, the last day, I think I cried a little bit more than she did. And I didn't think it was going to hit me the way that it did. Mm -hmm. You know, because we had been working up to that moment. We knew what the last day was. So I'd been preparing myself for it. And on the last, the last scene, on the last day, is when I lost it. And it, it was unexpected. For, for me, I, I didn't expect uh, to lose it the way that I did. Um, but that just goes to show how much I love what I do, love doing it with the people that I did it with for the last eight years. Yeah. Well, it yeah. becomes a family. I mean, you're with these people every day, the whole crew, the, mm -hmm. you know, for, for us, it's the same thing. And, um, but what, what I was saying during the break, that you should be so proud because that show um, was such an important show because it tackled uh, it, it, issues and, and handled them in a serious way and yet funny and uh, it, it just was, I mean, you should just be so proud to be a part of something like that on television. Thank you. We are. We are. I, you know, we had, uh, from top to bottom, uh, from my partner in crime with this, who, who created the show, Kenya Barris, uh, to our writers, to our directors, to, uh, to everyone. But when Kenya and I sat down almost 10 years ago now, we just looked at what was missing from the landscape of television for us, for he and I as, as viewers. And, you know, we, we wanted to uh, make an important show that had an impact. You know, we took a page from Norman Lear's book with uh, the Jeffersons, Good Times, All in the Family, you know, and uh, we, we, wanted to, we wanted to do a show like that, a show that uh, had social commentary, unapologetic lead characters, uh, and, and I believe we were successful. You were for sure successful. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. All right, the series finale of Blackish airs tomorrow at 9.30 on ABC. We'll be right back. <laughs>